Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for AWS, Amazon Web Services reInvent. That's their big conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. It's theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the signals from the noise, bring you all the action, all the commentary, all the analysis and opinion. Top executives at Amazon are on, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, startups. We bring it all, and we want to bring that, share that with you. My next is Ryan uh, Floyd, who's the managing director at Storm Ventures, great VC firm. It may not be the big household name like some of the big brand VCs, but they do a lot of great investments. Uh, Ryan, welcome to theCUBE. John, I'm happy to be here. Great so, to be here. Uh, Always follow the money. I always say <laughs> follow the money, and that's where the action is. Um, I've seen more VCs here that aren't supposed to be here than I've ever seen at an event. I mean, they're all here. Well, they're I, all huddling, doing deals. Well, the first couple of years in VC, I told my wife I got really good at it, because half of the job is getting really good at losing money. <laughs> so now I'm getting better at the second half, which is making money. So what do you no, guys have? This is the show. This is the show for cloud. So talk about Storm. Give, give everyone folks a quick head, a heads up on yeah. Storm, deals you've guys done, exits. Yeah, so the quick 30 seconds on Storm. So we started it uh, 15 years ago. I was one of the founders. All we do is mobile, cloud, and SaaS, focused on the enterprise. It's all early stage. Uh, so we've been an investor in cloud for the last three, four years, really since it started. I remember when uh, Amazon first rolled into the Stanford Faculty Club, uh, and it was a short presentation basically on S3 uh, and EC2. Uh, right scale, I think, was one of the only like, exhibitors. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's come yeah. a long way. And they're still exhibiting. <laughs> Their booth is still yeah. the same size. <laughs> um, so obviously Amazon is like, some compared to Microsoft. So this, this just come up in the hallways here. And Andy Jassy would not be admitting this because it's like you know, Seattle, Microsoft. You can make that stretch. People putting that connection together. They're building an operating system. So like, if you're not on their camp, you're potentially an enemy. So do you partner with these guys? We had Informatica on, so I mean, obviously Amazon's winning. Yeah. I mean, it's just, just like Secretariat, running away with it. Yeah. Just no doubt, yep. kicking ass. Yep. At the scale, but at some point, how do we companies figure into this? Do I get bought by Amazon? Is it an open ecosystem? As an investor, you got bets out there. Yeah, so yeah, what's yeah. your... Thesis no, in it's, this. it's actually, it's been, it's been incredibly hard. So I don't have a single investment that is just dedicated to the Amazon ecosystem. And the reason for that's been, it's been really hard to figure out a startup that you can place, that can really come in and compete and win. I mean, because Amazon's so fast at delivering services, it's hard to know what to develop against. So, so actually, where I've been more active is on the private cloud side with OpenStack. So we've made a several investments on the OpenStack side uh, and if you were to ask me you know, where I think things are headed, I would bet you in five years you're going to see a lot of convergence between what's happening on that OpenStack side and what Amazon's doing uh, as people look to you know, hybrid clouds and making them work, work together. So basically there's a number two in the market that's OpenStack to Amazon because there's a lot of people who don't want to buy into Amazon. There's a lot of enterprise vendors with billions of dollars in revenue right. that aren't just going to yield. Well, but I'll tell you what, it, you know, customers don't really care about those, those, those big enterprise vendors. They're tired of it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, James Hamilton, we were just talking about it in his, his session about you know, building your own racks of, of servers, building your own racks of storage. This is what customers want. They don't want to pay for all these service contracts for things that don't work. They just want the service. So I actually think a lot of what's happening in OpenStack is a response to Amazon and the big companies like HP, EMC, they, 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 they don't have a choice. They got to innovate this way. So that's why you see the big guys going with embracing OpenStack, because right. they see that as that's a bridge right. for them, right? That's right. So that's a bridge to say, okay, if we don't serve our customers, we're going to be out of business. That's right. Now, those same guys just don't want to capitulate to AWS. That's right. Because AWS will just suck them in, right? Right. Um, well, I think, and I actually think, I mean, there is, there is some meat on the bones with OpenStack. When you get to scale, when you're spending two, three, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars a month in IT costs at Amazon, it starts to make sense to look to running your own private cloud, depending on the application. It's not true in all, in all cases. And I think the mistake a lot of people make is they think it's a winner take all market. It's not. Yeah, I uh, agree. There's going to be multiple winners. So that brings up a good point, this private cloud, because we had Teresa Carlson on, she runs the government business, so, I mean, the public sector, which is right. the CIA, right. intelligence community, which, you know, Jesse on, uh, Jesse Proudman on from Blue Box was on there saying, hey, you know, that's a private cloud. 
technically he's right. I mean, it's a private cloud. Right. <laughs> it's a public. I actually know little about that architecture, but I know it's AWS, but, but Is it yeah. a private cloud, or is it just a public, with, you know, it's private with a public name on it? I, I can tell you, but then someone might shoot me out of the audience. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. What I, this is what I can tell you about private cloud at scale, though. Time Warner, BMW, uh, Comcast, AT&T, those companies are running. Bloomberg, they're running private clouds at scale on OpenStack. So, the, you know, OpenStack, Amazon, I mean, it's all good. What I think the, the companies that are in trouble and why it's so good to be a venture investor and a startup right now, it's the big incumbents. It's so hard right now. You have SaaS happening, you have mobile, you have cloud, all happening. It's literally a perfect storm. And for these large companies to change course that quickly, it's, it's just, it's a tall order. It's not like they don't have smart engineers, they do. Brilliant yeah. guys but it's just, it's hard, it's all, right. all happening so fast. All right, so let's back up. Let's talk about the money. Where's your investment thesis in clouds? So you got SaaS as cloud, mobile, certainly mobile infrastructure, um, and that's going to be key. So what's your key investment thesis going forward for startups? Because you've got two things, you got buyers, the big guys are buying, filling their product lines with you know, new startups that get, you know, I wouldn't say AccuHire, but you know, a couple hundred million dollars, right. a tuck under to a right. full scale. Right growth business, right? right? EMC does that, IBM might do the tuck under. Right. And there's a bunch of other ones. Then there's the lucky strike, the unicorn that goes public. Right. Or gets close to public and taken out for huge gains. With that in mind, what's your thesis in this market from a quality perspective? Well, you listen, at a really high level, what every single enterprise wants is they want AWS-like service. Whether it's running their private cloud or they're consuming it from AWS. They want what Google has, they want what Facebook has, uh, and, and so they're trying to figure out ways to consume that. So my job as a venture investor is to figure out startups that enable that to happen, whether that's vis-a-vis -vis AWS yeah. or via OpenStack. The whole thesis around OpenStack, frankly, has been, for years, it's just a bag of bolts. And it was very hard for enterprises to stand up private clouds. Yeah. So the thesis was, how do we make it easy to consume? And that's still a large part of the thesis, but really at a high level, it's, it's how do you give a GE the capabilities of Facebook? because they don't have the IT resources. They don't have the engineering capability. So that's the opportunity. What do you see with Cloud Foundry playing a role in that, with Paul Moritz, what he's doing with Pivotal? Well, Cloud Foundry is just a piece, right, of overall yeah. what Pivotal's trying to Pass. do. I, I, I have never been a huge fan of Pass. Uh, I think Cloud Foundry probably has the best chance uh, on, the, on, the, you know, on the private side. Obviously, a lot of what Amazon's doing with Aurora and so forth, is a lot, I think of that as Pass as well. Uh, but I think out of all the, you know, compared to, you know, Red Why aren't you a big fan of Pass? What's the reasoning? Too much um, uncertainty, there's a lot of moving parts. The lock-in. The lock I just think getting developers to buy into that, it's just, it's a whole nother step above the infrastructure layer. Yeah. Getting developers to buy into an API against block store, object store, compute, that's one thing. When you start really layering in these services that you're completely dependent on, yeah. you got to code specifically for it, it's a whole nother level. Well, that's why you're seeing developers shy away from Beanstalk a little bit. And right. We've seen that, we've done some Redis Beanstalk stuff, but that's not really, it's nervous, it's more of a kind of like, mm, risk. Yes. Versus Docker, nice, right? That's Get behind easy. Docker. Easy to consume, that's right. Easy to consume, and it's total, totally open source. Uh, I mean, if you look so at you Heroku, you look at Engine Yard. I mean, so Engine Yard, I think, is a great example. So, so, so Groupon was on Engine Yard for years. But then as soon as Groupon got to scale, they didn't want to pay the tax uh, at, at Engine Yard, and they moved off. And I think that's, that's part of the problem with these PaaS layers, is it, it can add an additional tax that again, once you get to scale, you... you it's also a human capital factor too, right? You have engineers that might know something, and then they move to another job, who's right. going to run that? Right. Do you see that being a factor, or is it more of that the lock-in prevents migration? I mean, what, I mean I, I'm trying to nail down what about the PaaS. Is it to be owned by the stack provider? What's yeah? What's I, I, the biggest thing we've seen in our startups, it's being owned by the stack. It's very, it's very, it's relatively easy to think about moving an application from OpenStack to AWS to maybe some you know bare metal environment at, at uh, Rackspace or something. It's much harder to think about if you're built on Elastic Beanstalk or on Aurora. How do you move that thing? Right? You've coded specifically to it. You know, a lot of the stuff they're talking about with the availability zones and the dependencies, it's amazing stuff, but you got to code specifically to it. It's very hard to move away from it. And what's the solution? Well, I think the solution's going to come yeah. in, so that's the startups. I think there's going to be startups that are going to help solve the problem. It's just these problems about replication. I love the network analogy that James Hamilton was talking about. I think he's absolutely right that one of the big problems- What was the analogy? Say, well, basically, you know, we've, we've storage, we've got scale. Compute, we've got scale. The problem now is we don't have network scale. We've got all these service providers, there's always bandwidth constraints. Uh, it's very, very expensive, and now we want to be moving data back and forth, and it's a big problem for Amazon, especially if you think about moving between these you know, availability zones or laying their own fiber. Yeah. So it's a big opportunity, I think, for 
networking companies to figure out what they can do better, how they can make it more efficient, and it's unlikely to come from Cisco, at least initially. Well, Cisco, Google, Google's peer, peer transport, they got in their game, the peering business, yes. the Google Cloud Conference. Yes. I mean, yeah, that's I a mean, beautiful Google, move right there. That's right, I mean, they're, lay, they're laying fiber, I mean, they're doing that, I don't, I don't really understand the balloons and the internet, you know, uh, right. off the balloon, but. Keep Sergey yeah. happy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, the network is key, right? Because if you don't have the network scale, you've got a major problem for a lot of applications. Yeah, we got Netflix kind of right here behind us, people can't see off camera, but, you know, Netflix uses a lot of bandwidth, so does Amazon. So that's right. they're beholden to a intermediary. Unless they own their own backbone, well, why would so, they want to run think, transit and, over? And Netflix is a great example. So Netflix, while it's, an, it's an obviously a huge Amazon showcase customer, they built their own CDN for exactly this reason, right? It was their biggest pain point in terms of how do they deliver bandwidth to their customers. So they went out and then a couple years ago and they said, we're going to go build our own CDN, and they did. So I got I to ask you about this SaaS thing because this is something that's come up and, and I've been, been chirping, uh, chirping about this on Twitter uh, and, and to startups. Great startups, they come in, they leverage SaaS, a lot of leverage, you can get 10X engineer kind of model, it goes on, and you get some scale in the cloud, and you get some traction. But the sales piece is really critical, right? Sales has to match the land and expand, so right. the go-to-market in SaaS is a pretty obvious folks in the business, but outside of that, that's the secret formula. If you're mismatching your go-to-market sales due diligence with the product. So this brings up the product market that I wanted to ask you about. What are you seeing for that, and what do you talk to entrepreneurs about in your companies? Okay, if you got product market fit by yesterday's definition was, you got some people interested in the product, but does it scale the product market fit? So there's like almost two aspects. You got some product market fit today, what does it scale look like in SaaS for the, the go-to-market? So I think what you're asking is once you've got, once you've got customers that want to buy, how do, how do you go about selling it? Uh, and I think the key question there is really what's the price points? I mean, if you can't extract, you know, take on energy, so I just focus on the enterprise. So don't ask me anything about consumer stuff. I, <laughs> I, I love it, but I, I'm not the right guy. On the enterprise, I know, you know, I know, I know a lot more. That's where my experience is. You know, and you talk about price points, you know, uh, 10, 20K, you know, that's got to all be done over the phone. Even price points up to like, you know, 50, 60, 70K, a lot of that stuff's got to be done over the phone. So that means you got to have a great lead engine yeah. that they're driving leads in, or you've got to have an outbound telesales effort that's setting up meetings. It's only when you get to the six-figure deals and plus, you know, larger deals where actually you can have people start to go into the field. So for SaaS, the key thing I think in terms of understanding that go-to-market, it's really around price point and how does it scale. And one of the key things I think a lot of companies have figured out is time to value. If you can figure out with a customer, take a big customer like yeah. GE, yeah. give them value very quickly with a relatively small price point, then you grow the account. So instead of coming in and closing like the traditional enterprise sale deal yeah. where you're going and you kill them with a million and a half dollar software deal and it sits on the shelf, now you go in and you sell 50K deal, but you know what, three months later, yeah. they've gotten so much value out of it, they buy another 100K, and, and that's how you grow those and accounts. And that's a shadow IT kind of concept where you land and expand, Tableau, Splunk, all the winners. That's right, I mean, that's to me, right. That's that, the, that, 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 that absolutely is proven the winning strategy. formula. Um, and by the way, that Jive kind of enterprise model of Jive, Oracle, that's what you were talking about earlier, that people want to move away from. Yeah, As, I that's don't right. want to buy the bulk. Nobody wants to play golf. Yeah, they no, want to. No, 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 no. People want to play golf, but they don't want to talk. They don't want to talk in enterprise software. <laughs> They'll play golf anymore. The customer <laughs> will take you golfing when they get promoted <laughs> for having right. the value. That's um, right. That's all right. right. So, what exits you guys got going on? What cool things are going on? At Storm. What's going on in the VC community? Well, we um, just so in 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 the uh, in the cloud space, we just had this company MetaCloud. We wrote the first check for them. They did OpenStack as a service uh, and helped customers like Disney, TapJoy, SurveyMonkey. Uh, Time Warner, um, and uh, we just sold that company to Cisco, and it's part of you know, Cisco's offering for how they're going to deliver private cloud. Um, so we've been very active on, on that side. On the SaaS side, you know, we've got a bunch of companies, GuideSpark, TalkDesk, I can name a bunch, there's a bunch that have gone public. Marketo, marketing automation software company, we had a company earlier this year. Did you invest in Marketo? We did, we were early investor in Marketo. We were an early, we actually nice. incubated a company called Mobile Iron. Uh, it's on the SaaS side on the secu mobile security. Uh, so we've been very active. Again, just focus on early stage enterprise, yeah, I know but, we've been, but we've been very good in that oh, sector. That's awesome. And you yeah. know what, now everyone wants to do the enterprise. Enterprise hot, you know, it's like the trend goes from consumer to enterprise. I've noticed in the past year, it's oh, enterprise is hot. Yeah, well, the, yeah. But it's hard, it's not easy. It, it, yeah, I mean, everything kind of ebbs and flows. What I've found as an investor over the years is, you just, 
everybody's, everybody's different strategies can work. You just have to be good at executing your yeah, own strategy. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're very good at executing this early stage you know, enterprise strategy. Um, what do you think about the capital markets right now? Is a bubble, are people pulling back right now? Do you see a little, I see a little back drift going on in terms of you know, people a little nervous. Uh, that's just my, my opinion. I, don't, right. I actually, no, I, I mean I think the, what, I'm actually really happy where the public markets are uh, because they're sane. They're, they're not doing crazy things. Now the late stage private market, there's some craziness happening there, mm -hmm. but arguably, but the, but, the, but the public markets are actually very sane. I mean, you know, they forced Box to delay their, the IPO. Yet at the same time, Hortonworks filed to go public. So, I mean, it's... Uh, it's their it's, revenues were much lower than expected. 30 million. Hort Hortonworks. Hortonworks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, I think the, 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 the public markets are actually very sane, which is good because that means we're not in a time of just absolute craziness. Well, uh, Fusion IO was forced to sell to SanDisk, you saw that. I mean, yep. they're going to they're gonna take you down if you're not performing. That's right. So that's really rational. That's right, that's right. <laughs> the private market, pure storage and cloud era are worth billions. Right, that's right. And you know, we saw Brightroll just got, yeah. got taken out, uh, right, it was announced today uh, with Yahoo, and they could have gone public, uh, but they decided, you know, Tremor and, and Yumi, the other video yeah. solutions, hadn't done as well, and, uh, and so it's a good decision, I think, so, for Brightroll. So some balance is coming back into yeah. the VC force then. I think so. I mean, I think certainly relative to the public markets, there is a lot of late stage money uh, that's, that, that's uh, paying relatively high prices. You know, the, the Cloudera valuation, uh, you know, uh, Dropbox, Uber. I mean, these are great companies. Are they worth, you know, is Uber worth 25 billion? I, I don't know. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, time, time will tell. But again, that's on the consumer. I would I, definitely I, have sold I, my shares on that round of funding. It's a great company. What's interesting on the enterprise side, companies don't grow valuations that quickly, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not equipped to answer it, but, uh, but right. it's, it's a good time. So talk about Storm. Tell the folks out there, what should they know about you guys? What's your culture like? What do you invest in? What do you look for uh, for entrepreneurs? Is there a secret algorithm fit that you look <laughs> secret for? Secret decoder ring? Yeah, secret handshake, look, I mean. I mean. Look, we're looking for passionate entrepreneurs that are in the enterprise sector that want to do something in mobile cloud and SaaS. We're willing to take a risk before companies break out. So we're not looking for companies that have got a you know, million dollars a month. A lot of people will invest in those companies. But we're looking for people that really understand the domain and we're looking for companies that have some product market fit. Uh, and then what we do really well is help those companies scale. We help them cross, you know, that we were talking about earlier about how to figure out what the right sales model yeah. is. You know, how do you grow that base? How do you go from 100,000 a month to a million dollars a month? That's where we're really good. Well, you guys do some good deals. We, we're familiar with you in OpenStack. Certainly got a great reputation in the industry uh, as a firm. Um, so you're one of the good guys out there. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, Ryan here with Storm Ventures, founder of the, of the firm. Uh, again, VC's doing their part building the next generation uh, companies, all in this crazy awesome world of cloud, mobile, social. And this is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. Thanks, John.